something has to be said about necky emails. Yeah. The tone mm -mm. that you can get across in an email in comparison to even like a WhatsApp or anything face to face. Yeah. People sometimes just feel like they can get away with anything. As oh, per my can... last email. No! Oh! As I mentioned. Hello and welcome to Girls With Goals. I'm Neve Marr. I'm delighted to welcome my guest to studio today. My delectable colleague from her, Denise Curtin, is back with us. Hello. And also travel writer and blogger Nadia L. Ferdowsi, or Nadia Daily Self, Hello. as you're also known. Delighted to have you guys with us. Thank you. Denise, it's been a little minute since it I've has. seen you. I know, I've, I've missed being here. I'm really happy to be back on the couch. I've, I've got you. a text wrapped how long ago? Oh, it's been a month now. It's yeah. been a month. Yeah. I can't believe it. It feels like it, it, it feels like yesterday. Yeah, it finished and then I jetted it off. So now I'm I, I'm back in situ now. Yeah, you've been off trying to steal Nadia's yeah, job. I really <laughs> have. I'm here to get all the tips today and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue a new career. <laughs> this is this is what Denise it is. Curtin travel blogger extraordinaire. Um, um we're gonna start off with our game six words or less though. So it's for any of our listeners and readers of her who may not know who you are. So you have to describe yourself in six words or less. So in your own time. Okay. The first one's forgetful. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel case. you on that one. Just in case. Uh, assertive. Spontaneous. Fun. Curious. Got the last one. Uh, five. <laughs> you got five. five Forgot words four. Or less. Forget yeah. four. Yeah. Well, six words or less, so you can do less. It's the yeah. name. I of the only game. ever had five. Mm -hmm. So forgetful isn't a word that we see that often now. Whether that's because people don't want to admit that they're forgetful, or that they forget that they're forgetful. But have you ever forgotten anything that's been incredibly crucial? I have this fear all the time that you've forgotten yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. all mm. the time. You know that when you go to the airport. I don't really get it that much when I go to the airport, because I'm always like, if I have my passport, I'm fine, yeah. everything else. But um, I think, I only realized this year, I think it's because I'm always learning so much new information, like going to new countries, yeah. different languages, yeah. and there's always new people and groups and stuff that it's a little bit of an overwhelming situation. It's, a, it's My brain can't handle the amount of new information I receive all the time. I feel like some people are either forgetful or they're not forgetful. Like I forget really big things at times. Like I forgot my passport before. I've forgotten things like if I'm going to the gym, I'll forget a top, like things like this that I literally mm. can't do without. Mine are, are more like, I can't remember who I went to school with. <laughs> and um, people tell me their secrets all the time because there's no way. Wait, that you'll remember. Yeah. They're yeah. like, do you remember I talked? I'm like, no. They're like, you, th you know, that person was with that. I'm like, I don't remember that. Yeah, I have to say I'm absolutely horrific with names. I'm te mm -hmm. I'm terrible. I'm very with bad names. too. Yeah. I'm really really bad at it. Like if somebody tells me their name, I instantly forget it. Mm -hmm. And it's not anything to do with them or the interaction that we're having. I just forget their name and I need to say it twice, sometimes three times. I forget times. to do that. I know that's the trick, but yeah. I forget to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hi, Neve, nice to meet me. I think because your environment is changing so much as well yeah. when you're traveling that like when people are like, hi, I'm Sarah and I'm Kevin. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, then, and then it's a case that when you get the second breed, you're like, oh shit, what was their names again? You know, it's like that yeah. kind of, it hits you then. It is. <laughs> Speaking of forgetful, I'm literally forgetting to to do the show. So let's get back to what, yeah. we're, what we we're gonna talk about. Um, so I wanna talk about your career. Um, I followed you for a really long time. You have an incredible online presence and blog as well. So if we go back a little bit to how you kind of got involved in travel writing mm -hmm. in the first place, was it something, like it's a hard career to crack into, but was it something that you always enjoyed doing when you were younger, traveling? Yeah, travel has, it's always been something that I've done as, like, as a family. We've always traveled. We used to go to Spain a lot and we went to America when we were kids and stuff. Um, but I didn't think this could be a career, like a real job. Um, I was actually a makeup artist. So I went to college three times, quit the first two, and then makeup artistry, my makeup artistry was the first one I actually finished. Okay. So I stopped doing things that I should do and just did what I wanted to do. And I worked as a makeup artist then for years. I was freelance. And I started writing beauty and I became a beauty editor for a magazine. And while doing that, I was freelance. Um, I was asked to go on a trip and it was wine tasting in Spain because the editor couldn't go. My best friend, Vicky, she couldn't take it because it was a weekly magazine and they were going to press. Obviously, she couldn't take three days off. Mm. So she said, did you want to go wine tasting in Spain? Like, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hello. It's not yeah. even a question. And yeah. I'm actually going back next week with her to the exact same place. So it's come like full circle Stop. five years later. Yeah. So I did that trip and then she was kind of like, look, you can write and you love travel. Why don't you try and do more of this? So I started to pitch 
to different publications and it was all print at first or magazines and newspapers and I just searched for trips that I wanted to do which is a bit different to how travel writing is done in Ireland. A yeah. lot of it is, you know, a company will come to a publication and say, we have this trip to Spain, who wants to go? Yeah. Whereas I was searching for stuff that I wanted to do that were a bit different. Yeah. So the next one I did was sailing in Greece. And I just tried to find unique things and pitch it to different publications. And of course they would take it because nobody else was writing about that stuff. Yeah. But then I had all these images and I was getting really into photography and I had nowhere to put it because they only print a couple, if any. Lots of times they use stock images that have nothing to do with <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's in newspaper as well so the quality is no good so I started my blog and I changed my Instagram from being you know just a personal thing to pictures of my work and now I do much more social that I still write for print I still write for um, websites as well yeah but it's just completely changed into a whole new thing that I just didn't ever dream of and it was never my plan yeah it just happened organically but I suppose like the medium of of travel blogging in general has changed because imagery is so crucial now in terms of like if we're scrolling through Instagram or whatever and we see like a beautiful picture of Sintra you know we're all just like oh my god I want to go there and that's what kind of pulls you in first but I find that I do go and actually read the blogs as well because I want all the information yeah it's probably before you go on a trip if you know you're going to Portugal you'll go and read that but I think people have stopped like just reading travel features for the sake of it it's only yeah. if they really want to get the information so I do try and make them quite factual so you know you can get the practical tips um but it's definitely like you say so visual you know people are saving images to their folders on Instagram and like travel inspiration yeah and everything goes in trends like I yeah. asked the other day where people want to go and if I asked a year ago it, it was well, I did ask it was all Bali, Bali. and Maldives yeah and now it's Japan uh, well, that's obviously very current at the moment, and Alaska, and a lot more really different. It's not the beach holiday anymore. It's a lot more of experiences mm. and activities, and yeah, you just have to keep up with the changing trends. Do you see those trends coming before they hit? Like, you know, the way we, we talk a lot, we have a lot of, you know, fashion on site, and, and we've talked to designers a lot, and we always talk about the changing trends and, and how things kind of come into being. Like, do, do you see that coming? Because I remember as well, now I'm, I'm a full follower of trends. Like, I was in Bali five years ago when the Bali craze hit yeah. I was in Japan this year do you know like I, I follow <laughs> That's exactly it <laughs> I follow the trends to a T Alaska next year um, <laughs> but like do you kind of sense that they're coming or is there more of an insight when you're actually in the industry no no nobody's really talking about that so much I mean mm. you, you see some bits but I think in Ireland we are usually a little bit behind yeah. the trends um, but that's okay, you know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that really. But uh, no, no, I don't really think there's no, we don't get like a special email that tells us <laughs> what's going to be hot next year. I would love that, I would love that no. too, to just be ahead of it. So when you get that Instagram picture, you're like, yes, I'm here first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. See, it's all over Instagram, it's already happened. You it's know? already yeah. happened. See, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. And that's probably why like trends fade fast as well in yeah. places where to go now. Like, is Bali old news now? I is, think it might be, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so. yeah. Like, yeah. Sri Lanka was, was going to be the next one, but then obviously the trouble yeah it probably will come back yeah philippines have already had to close some beaches and stuff because yeah. me and my girlfriends were there five years ago and i remember at the time you know when we said bali to people it was like what yeah, yeah. do you know how far you might as well just go to australia that's far away yeah. and we were well chuffed with our decision i don't even know how we came to it and now like it's it's almost like going to spain yeah isn't yeah. that a terrible no. thing because it no. is literally on the other side of the world but air travel is so much cheaper now as well yeah. it really isn't doesn't seem that far anymore yeah, yeah absolutely i need to go to like the south pacific to feel far yeah i mean the thing i i always find interesting about travel writers and travel bloggers and we were talking about it a little bit before we came on, on air in terms of you just got back from a holiday holiday so like how do you differentiate between a holiday holiday and what is essentially a work holiday because it all looks incredible but do the trips that you're on which are specifically for work feel like work to you I don't want to dash the dream or the illusion <laughs> yes but they're like, completely different okay so everyone says oh you're always on holiday I wish. My job is essentially researching holidays for other people. Yeah. I'm not on my holiday. I'm not on my own time. I have an itinerary. I have a schedule. I have to do what 
that is kind of expected So you can't me. just like obviously take an afternoon and go and sit and, and read a book no, like no, no absolutely not so it, it is like, very much a job yeah exactly you don't press trips you know you wake wake up it's like eight at reception yeah. and you go and do whatever activity and then you meet this person and it is a job and you're obviously taking notes you're creating images you're thinking what what's going to be the angle for my my mm. feature who can i pitch this to who can i write for um and it yeah it's it's a job so a holiday for me is I don't have to pick up my phone. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. I can yeah. do nothing and that's it. You know, your you're, you're normal holiday. I actually get envious of people on their holidays. Yeah. You know, I took one week this year and that was it. But I think that's probably like a good thing for people to know as well because I think sometimes when people are looking from the outside in and they're looking at, you know, not only uh, bloggers and kind of influencers, but I do think the travel sphere in particular is the one that's the most envious inducing you know because you, you just have these stunning pictures and and the food just looks ridiculously good and like everybody knows that it's work and people know that you're working but it still looks like the best goddamn job in the world yeah so it's probably good to know that it is in fact like a lot of a lot of work as well even if you think of your holiday it's not always glamorous and mm. there's early starts and late nights and delays and baggage being lost and traveling is is tiring actually yeah. the actual journey and you can't do what I do unless you enjoy the traveling part I right. like being at the airport I don't mind being on buses trains planes I love all that yeah but it is tiring physically demanding and the different time zones and all that kind of thing so it's not always glamorous but I've kind of stopped trying to persuade people that it's not a holiday because they're gonna think what they want to think yeah, and that's fine so true, and like yeah. yeah it's more exciting than being at a desk nine to five but at the same time, I don't get to clock off at five. I don't get my bank holidays off, weekends off, yeah. pay if I'm sick, you know. So yeah. there's pros and cons. And how do you find doing this solo? Like, would you be doing every trip by yourself or are you in a group of people you don't know or how does it usually work? It's always different and that's what I love about it. So I could just decide to go on my own. So I went to New Zealand completely mm. alone while I was there, went to Fiji, stopped in Dubai on the way back. That was about six weeks being completely solo, didn't know a single person. And then another time it will be with um, a group of journalists or bloggers okay. and a PR and it'll be the whole thing will be set up and that will be with a tourism board mm. or a hotel or whoever it is. Um, and then other times if I do something maybe in Ireland I can get to bring someone or I had a cruise recently where I had the opportunity to bring a plus one but mm. I decided to go alone. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I just, it's easier because the other person doesn't understand that it is actually work. And they think of it as a holiday, yeah. It holiday. And it is their holiday, you know. So where, where was the cruise? In the Med and I absolutely loved it and I would totally recommend a cruise alone. Like a cruise ship, as in like those massive, yeah. massive cruise ships. I've I've seen so much information about them but I actually watched I don't know if you watched the Patriot Act Hassan Minhaj it's an amazing program on Netflix you should yeah. go um but the cruise ship industry is like multi billion oh God, dollar industry absolutely massive and once you do one you realize that how big it is and people who do it are like that's what they do. They do cruising and they have yeah. all the merchandise and they have all the loyalty points yeah. and they know every name of every ship and all and this kind like of thing. And they're like little floating countries, essentially. Yeah. They, well, have, like, they have everything, everything you need on them. Absolutely yeah. everything, yeah. See, I get seasick and I don't know if that affa if it affects you on a cruise because they're so massive. If you're very badly seasick, it could do. Yeah. But otherwise, you don't really feel the motion. Yeah. Especially in the Mediterranean because it's not... Yes, yes, calm. Well, you wouldn't want to be in yeah. <laughs> It's calm. Denise knows. She's a travel blogger. It's the calm. Med, it's calm in the mess. It's very calm. Yeah. It actually is. That is something yeah. I do know. But it, it was really cool to be able to see all those places without having to pack and unpack every day. So that's what I do a lot. Yeah. Living out of a suitcase and always having to check out the hotel the yeah. next morning. You only stay a lot of places one night. So to be able to get on the cruise and unpack my suitcase oh, for yeah. seven days, I was so excited. Amazing. And then it started in Barcelona. I got to see um, Valencia, Ibiza, Marseille, Nice, La Spezia in Italy, where I went to Cinque Terre, which was amazing. And then it finished in Rome. So all of that, and I didn't have to wow. move myself. Oh, I just yeah. woke up in a new country every day. Do you ever feel pressure, especially if you're doing like a collaboration or a partnership with, say, like a tourism board or something, do you ever feel pressure to not 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 be honest but like to to give the bad as well as the good because like you said sometimes holidays can be stressful like I go skiing most years with my family and we absolutely adore it but there's a there's a lot to a skiing holiday which is very 
underwhelming. Like you have to strap on those boots oh, and you have so to climb up the mountain and it's a lot. And like if you're a small person like me, like you're literally just getting jostled around yeah. until you actually get to mountain. And then when you go down, it's lovely and you and it, it makes it all worthwhile. Um, but do you ever feel the pressure to just only show the good? No, no. I, I think that's why I have the audience that I do because they see that I'm real. Yeah. And I... I think anyway that I, I do show a balance of people don't want to watch just a whole story or whatever of negative stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But um, you know, yeah, I, I definitely I'm like if this this food isn't great or you know they don't have proper hair dryer in this hotel or whatever it might yeah. be. Or when I was in Colombia, we were sick. Um, you all got sick. We were yeah <laughs> from the food. Don't just know, but general, yeah, yeah, but like pretty rough. Yeah. yeah, and you can't necessarily hide that as well. Like, no, especially no, when no. you have to be on every single yeah. day. You know, they'll know if you're green. Totally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we had a nine-hour bus journey, and it was oh. really hot, and all this kind of stuff. And no, I, I let them know because it's there's no point in hiding it. Yeah. I don't want people to think that I'm lying or that I'm fake. It's yeah. just a fact of life. Absolutely. And I suppose, like as well. You know, we've had a lot of uh, women on the show who are freelancers and who kind of work for themselves. Um, and they talk about, like, obviously the 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 amount of good that that brings, but also there are struggles. And, you know, I saw a tweet that you tweeted out recently and um, it was funny because you used a word that I'd never heard before. Was it necky? necky? <laughs> yeah. necky. Like, it was, necky. like the neck of you. Like, like the neck that's of you, really yeah. Necky. Yeah, but Nadia used it in kind of like a... A necky tone. Okay, I love that. I, I love yeah, that. I loved it. I never heard of it before. But presumably, this was to do with with something. Obviously, you didn't go into too much detail about yeah. it. Um, but like, do you find that it's hard at times? You know, when it comes to, obviously, you said at the beginning of your career there was a lot of like pitching and stuff. But you're very well established now. You have like over twenty seven thousand followers on Instagram. You are an established travel writer and blogger. But you know you still obviously have to combat the things that most freelancers do have to combat. And I'd say necky Absolutely. emails <laughs> yeah. are probably a part yeah. of that. Definitely the necky emails. Um, everyone thinks that you're, you're only working for them. So they think that whatever job you're doing for them is it. And all of your time can be dedicated to this one thing. Yeah. And I could have 15 projects on the go at once. So they, they, they're thinking, you know, I'll send an email. I want an urgent response and I want this done yesterday. And you're like, I'm actually on deadline for this, this and this. Yeah. You know, yeah. why do you think that yours is the most important? And it's a lot of that. Like there's, there are other bad bits about, you know, not getting paid on time mm. and all that kind of stuff. But that comes with the territory. I don't really mind that. But it's the kind of entitlement of people who like keyboard warriors who are sitting there at their desk and they might just think that your life is, you know, it's not serious and yeah. you're there to answer to their That you have all the time command. in the world. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. you're like sipping a mimosa, yeah. like waiting for an email. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't post too much about here I am at work on my laptop because again, it's boring. Mm. I know I do see people saying, you know, this is not always glamorous, here I am, but I'm not going to post so much of that as well because it just like tries some people try and look like martyrs like here I am working late here I am working yeah. early I get the job done I don't need to show it but then I think I suppose people assume you have loads of free time yeah. yeah I saw like that um you know the tweet that you put out there it did get like quite a lot of support and stuff like mm -hmm. that as well so obviously that's not you're not alone oh no absolutely not in no. that and I try and keep most of it offline I would never I see people complaining about not getting paid and stuff and I just think like got to have got to be professional online yeah. but sometimes it gets to the point I would never name anybody I would yeah. never go into detail you don't because, need to no, no no it's just kind of like like you say getting support knowing that you're not the only one in that and then yeah. you think okay it's not just me I think it's, ride the wave. Yeah, but I think it's almost a good way to do it as well. To You know, there's a huge community mm -hmm. of people who are working for themselves now in Ireland, particularly in the media landscape, you know. And I think it's hard as well, I would imagine. Like, I've never done it. I've never worked freelance myself. Um, but I'd say it's hard, you know, to feel like you're on your own, bashing yeah. down the door sometimes um, when essentially you've done your work and you need to get mm -hmm. paid. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And you know what? I have to say, the majority of people are great yeah. that I work with. You know, mostly people really understand mm. and they're, they're really nice to work with. And I also work with an agency who can pick up if, yeah. if I'm not, if I'm on a different time zone or even when I was on my holidays. Mm. So they were able to do some of the calls and emails and okay. stuff. So I do have support. Yeah. Um, and, and like you say, 
there's so many of us in the country that are, are freelancers. Absolutely. So most of my friends are in the same industry. So yeah. yeah, I do have the support. And I don't I think it would be very tricky if I didn't. Absolutely. I do have to say though that something has to be said about necky emails. Yeah. The tone mm -mm. that you can get across in an email in comparison to even like a WhatsApp or anything face to face. Yeah. People sometimes just feel like they can get away with anything. As oh, per my last email. No! Uh, yes, I mentioned. It's that kind of lingo, no. you know, yeah. where you're just like, oh my God, you're biting your fist and you're yeah. just like, I can't even respond to this right now. They would never There's, speak to you like that. Oh, they would life. never speak to you like that. Yeah. And it's, you know, when you get those emails and then you decide to like confront it face to face, it's like, oh, hi, hi, how are things? You know, they're so different when yeah. you meet them. Yeah. So I heard a rumor as well that you are now, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. um, are you or are you not or are you becoming a master of wine? Well, I wish I was becoming a master of wine. That's a really, Is really... Is that a title? Yeah, that's oh. a title. But that's a really, really tough exam. It's like one of the most failed exams in the world. Oh, and shit. I'd have to study for years and years yeah. and years before I get to that point. But I have started studying wine and Amazing. I have done a couple of exams. Um, so I have some qualifications and I'm going to continue. I want to be a champagne master. Oh. Yeah, I, I want to do that too. Why not? I want to do that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Denise. You have to. Yeah. I was in Champagne recently for a trip and um, one of the guys who was doing a cellar tour, I was asking loads of questions and he was saying, well, obviously you've studied, what are you going to do next? And he said, you should specialise in one thing. And I was going, yeah, that's actually a good idea. What do you think I should spe specialise in? And he was saying, well, Champagne, obviously. So put the seed in my head and I looked into it and I think I'm going to do it. I just love champagne so much. It's great. Champagne. I love champagne And you so can just much. drink it all day. You don't get hangover. And now, stop you right there. Can't drink it all day um, because I fall <laughs> okay. over. But do love a couple of glasses of champagne. It's just so different because, you know, Prosecco, like, I mean, we were talking about events, like, Jesus, you'd have so Prosecco so coming out of your veins. Like, Prosecco is everywhere. And just the difference between a Prosecco and a champagne is just... Prosecco oh. would have a bit more sugar in it. So, yeah. like, if you're having a lot of it, it will affect you differently. Mm. But, no, not champagne. Don't else. dare say that about no, champagne. I don't think you can beat champagne, to be honest with you. Oh, I love any bubbles, though. I love Prosecco, I love Cava. Yeah. love wine. Yeah, I love wine too. Yeah. And that very first trip was a wine trip. And then it was only last year I had a couple of months where I decided to stay at home during the summer, um, not travel for a bit. And then I just thought, right, I haven't learned anything new in a while. I need to use this time wisely. So I went and did a course and um, just continued on from there and have done, because it goes hand in hand with travel, food yeah. and wine. And yes. I write for food and wine online mm -hmm. as well. And I just thought I really should know what I'm talking about. And plus, I really enjoy it. Yeah. And it's something, because, I mean, Instagram's not going to last forever. So I need to be thinking ahead. Yeah. And what am I going to do when that bubble bursts and I need a backup plan? Yeah. And that's what I mean, is. when you think about it, like, you're hard pushed to find somebody who's not interested in food or wine. Yeah. Like, this is the Completely. thing. Travel, absolutely. I mean, everybody is interested in it. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we can do now heading into the winter, because mm -hmm. obviously the summer is over now. It was really Don't cold. No. Sorry, it was cold this morning, though. For the first time in a long mm -hmm. time, I felt a chill. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how we can get ourselves through the next few months. Um, but first, I caught up with a comedy legend. I'm going to call her a legend now at this point she's been absolutely smashing it as usual here and in the UK as well it's Joanne McNally Joanne McNally welcome to the show a friend of the show I would say you've been on 18 <laughs> times <laughs> whenever I do shows I'm like, a friend of the show no one, got, no one ever goes a personal friend of mine they're like she's just a friend of the show you have I'm friends on, with her.ie. You're friends with her.ie. You've been on, you were on the very first episode, which just to remind people, um, I actually described you, you didn't see this now, but I described you as a comedy legend in your intro there. So first question, would you agree with that? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> slash that down like it's so funny like you have to write all your own bios and everything and it's so naff you have to like big yourself up all the time um so i'm used to i'm used to believing lies about myself so yeah let's go with that absolutely comedy legend um i want to talk about the prosecco express it's premiering at smock alley theater as part of the dublin fringe festival so we'll we'll talk about that in a minute but it's mad to think that singlehood mm. was 2014 and that was the first stage show that you did yeah and that was only five years ago i know like it feels like you've been around for decades i don't know if that's a good thing Liv. <laughs> <laughs> i 
as I was, I say, don't know. As I I was know. saying it, I was like, that's an insult. Yeah, I'm like, is it? I don't really know. So, I, like, it's a funny thing because I still feel relatively new, but yeah. I'm probably not that new anymore, really. Like, five years, usually people you meet who are kind of doing, like, doing it full time and they're kind of getting place, they're 10 years in it. Yeah. Um, so five is not that long a time. But I know, and I'd never done. It's so weird how much I loved it. Like, just straight away, I loved it. Like, the last time I'd been on stage before that was literally my nativity. Actually, no. <laughs> I stand corrected. It was transition year and I did the sound of music. Did you think when you were doing the sound of music that you were going to be a, a star of the stage? Yes. <laughs> no, what, what was your part? I was Ralph the Telegram Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we were a convent, so they wouldn't let us, we couldn't do it with boys. You were the awful Nazi that ruined everything? Yeah, I was the one who threw everyone under the bus and ratted everyone out. Oh my God. I wanted to play Liesel. Um, everyone wants to play everyone Liesel. Everyone wants to play Liesel, of course. Mm. But I was wide and tall. And I remember <laughs> the, I say director, because, like, I mean, she, the religion teacher. Um, <laughs> was... <laughs> was like, I remember her saying to me, you, we can't have Liesl taller than her father. And I remember I was- Yeah, that's the problem. I was so upset. And so of course I ended up playing like the man and had to have all my hair like slicked back and wore really unattractive clothes and it triggered all my self-esteem issues. And I fell off the stage one night, not even messing. It was so humiliating. And my song was six octaves higher than Liesl's, which made no sense at all. So I, my voice kept cracking on the high note. It was a disaster. But was There's like, actually video footage of it somewhere. But it was this. I'm absolutely. <laughs> I'm hunting that out now and putting that it's as the promo. But it was that. What's the song where you and her are singing in the? She's 17. I'm, she's 16 going on 17. You I'm 17. Are 16 yeah. Going That's where hers started. 17. And mine started. I am 17 going on 18. And mine only went up. Mine kept going up. <laughs> like Disney songs. Oh. You start off and it's grand. And then by the end it's of it. Terrible, it's terrible. Like, oh. Yeah. Okay, so obviously that wasn't what you were going to do then. Well, I wanted to act. Mm. I did want to act. I knew I wanted to perform in some way. Um, I just loved attention so much. I was like, <laughs> maybe this could be my job. Uh, but my parents wouldn't have been that way inclined. Like, my parents are quite, like, normal. Like, yeah. they're not into acting and that kind of thing. Um, like, my mum has said since, she's like, I just really didn't know what to do with you. You were just just kind of this performery mm. style child. Like, I remember me and my... Um, bestie on the road you know you'd your bestie on the road yeah and you just live in each other's houses when we were babies astrid we weren't babies i mean we were walking around but we used to just knock on the neighbors doors and just start singing that sounds awful yeah and if they'd invite us in we'd then perform and so we'd practice all day we'd were you looking for money or were you just no <laughs> i mean we should have been looking for money we were terrible business women in between the neighbors we had them tormented between knocking on their door like basically bursting into the house and insisting we perform for them yeah. in the evenings. Like they no more wanted us in their sitting room. And then of course we'd be around at the weekends trying to sell them flower shite from the garden as perfume. And they they did it all. I actually saw a young guy, a young child. Remember like we'd all sell stuff. You'd have your, you'd yeah. be selling toys and all and your neighbors from goodwill would spend money. You'd bring and, out your desk from the room. Exactly. And you'd put it on the road. Yes. And then you were in business. Yes, Yeah. Exactly. Be like, excuse me, Tony. Do you not want yeah. this old doll that e I used to have? Exactly. Yeah. And your neighbours, we used to get them coming out from mass. Mm. Um, <laughs> so we'd really pull on their kind of like goodwill strings. And we'd sell all sorts of shite. But I was in the other day in Clapham, where I live in London. I walked past and this young lad, this boy was trying to do the same thing. But obviously now times are different. Well, we think times are different. So his dad was sitting beside him mm. on a toy stool. <laughs> Just looked so I was like, I don't want to do business with you, sir. Like, I never wanted, like, no one bought anything off me because they wanted the product. <laughs> they, no one wanted my adorable. naughty toy. They wanted it because they, they were being sound to the child. And they wanted the experience of doing business with a seven-year-old on yeah. the side of the street. I'm not going to go over and do business with a Round man, it just looks so weird. <laughs> you just don't see that anymore in general, though. <laughs> no. You don't see people dragging out their their toys to the front of the road. I don't think it's accepted. I don't know. I think it's because paedophilia is so trendy now. Parents are so concerned, so they don't let them sit outside. 
I really, really didn't want you to say that, but I mean, but that's why it is. It is fair. You're also not advised to go into neighbors' houses and sing at night. But no, like, it's sad, really. Yeah, it it's is. A sad state of the time. It's a bygone era. Um, but so obviously you were a performer. Have you seen your career unpaid go? and unqualified? Yes. <laughs> Have you seen your career go <laughs> in five years? Which it doesn't. Uh, in terms of comedy, I would say obviously successful and a long career but in terms of like the entertainment business there are people who've been in it for 20 25 years mm. so has your career gone in the way that you've wanted it to go well i mean i'm still here yeah. i had no plan because like it all was a very fortunate accident um it wasn't a plan Mm. which I think maybe in some ways is a positive thing because at the start there was no pressure on me really it was mm. something I was just trying I was like look it, if it works out it works out and I don't even know what working out looks like I don't know what that I don't know what I want like I, I don't know what I'm working towards I, it, usually I'm like oh I want to so my Vicar Street that was something to work towards and yeah. um, now I want the Apollo like that's my next thing so like I'm only going little by little and uh, my agents are like, what do you want? You know, you need, write it out, write your goals on the wall. And I'm like, I, d I don't know, just want to know, like just kind of hang out, do some gigs. And I need to be more, like, I'm not going to say I'm not ambitious, I am. Yeah. But I need to be more, I need to like plan my future more mm. rather than just like hammering ahead mm. with no bigger goal. Like I'm writing for telly now and stuff, writing bits and bobs. And I've just been cast in this new sketch show for ITV, mm. which I'm filming next week. So it's like... I think the premise is that you they you perform your stand up for in front of a live audience, but you also act out your stand up like they film you in a sketch of your stand up, and that plays in the background. So the show is then interjected between. Oh, so it's my first time ITV. doing. Yeah, so it's Fancy. my first time doing stand up on telly. So like, yes, it is moving in the right direction, yeah. but I've no idea what I want. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's slipped into a therapy session. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing and I have no idea what I want. But you have made the big jump to living in London now. You're, you're there yeah. full time. <laughs> Which is so funny because, you know, I've been planning to Like, I have UCAS forms. I wanted to go there for college. Mm. So I've been talking about going to London since I was 18. Um which is, I mean, so it's a great entertainment to my friends that I actually made it at 35. Yeah. But, like, I mean, obviously, that was a career decision, though, as well. Yes. As, as and well a lifestyle like, decision. Yeah. It was. London's amazing. It was both. It was It was like, right, now I have a really good reason to go. Mm. Um, because, actually, the comedy world, if you compare, like, Ireland and the UK, there's just such much, so much more opportunity over there. Yeah. So many more clubs. Um, and the clubs are your gym, so the more clubs you do, like the better you get is kind yeah. of the idea. And um, you're kind of working your muscles the whole time. Um, Did you have to start from like the ground up again in, in the UK? Or? Yes and no. Some clubs will take because I I've a, I've a good agent over there. I'm with I'm with a I'm with a good agency over there. So they would have some weight, and mm. people would some bookers would go, oh okay, if she's with this person, then obviously she's not completely shy. Let's mm. she you know she's obviously held a mic before. Let's yeah. kind of get her in and out. But then there's other clubs that are like, no 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 no, you'll do. You know, you'll come up like everyone else, and that's fine. Yeah. So there's some clubs now that I gig regularly in. Some go some gigs over there, I'm already like I, I would kind of close or headline in, and then there's other gigs I'm still waiting to get an open spot in. Yeah. So it's just it's completely variable. Yeah. Um, and then once Edinburgh comes around, every, it's every man for themselves, and you're yeah. on an equal footing with everyone up there. Except obviously, I've no telly behind me, no English telly, which yeah. really stands to you in Edinburgh. Um, so yeah, so it's a mix. So no, I didn't have to start from scratch, scratch. Yeah. Like, I had representation, I had management and all that kind of thing. But, you know, I didn't kind of move sideways into the club scene over there yeah. from here. That didn't happen either. And, and that's about, fine. What about Irish comics over there? Obviously, like, there's the massive names that we all know and stuff. But, you know, for people who say didn't have the profile that you had here in Ireland, that have just gone to London to kind of try and crack the the comedy circuit over there. Yeah. Like, is that tough? Do you see a lot of Irish comics over there that are like in a much lower position than you? It's a weird, uh, so I went, at a, at a, I think I went at actually the perfect time and I don't get that much right in my life I'm, and I'm very bad timing usually, but it just so happened that I, I think I made the decision at the right time because I don't, I can sell some tickets here, mm. but I'm not big here. Like I'm kind of just bubbling away at my own level. So there's no, usually sometimes if you're, 
are quite big somewhere and then you go somewhere else and it doesn't work out, you can kind of feel like you're coming home with your tail between your legs. Yeah. You can be there's some there's sometimes some shame attached to it. Um which of course there shouldn't be, but you know, I can understand people sometimes feeling like that. Whereas I had none of that pressure. Like yeah. I was barely visible here. I'm totally invisible over there. Mm. And I can just kind of mess around, hone my jokes, work on my stand up. So, what was the question? Other <laughs> Irish acts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only comfortable enough by myself, Niamh. I don't know why you want to talk about anyone else. Um, so this show, we've digressed. This show, right, Prosecco Express, tell me how it's different to the shows that you've done previously. Well, it's stand up. Mm. Um, but this show, so the, t- the theme is different, I guess. Yeah. So in for Edinburgh, there's like a kind of a, a trend to have yeah. a themed show it makes it easier to sell people know what they're getting because yeah. you had bite me of course bite me was the first show so that mm. was more comedy theater mm. and then i had to make it bite me was about bulimia and eating disorders and stuff and then i had to make a decision i felt like i had to make a decision right am i am i sta- am i doing stand up or am i doing comedy theater because i think it was getting confusing for people people were coming to bite me and then the next year i did wine timer which is just pure yeah. stand up and they're like oh there's no like yeah. where's the sad but or there's no kind of story arc or there's no light and dark in yeah. my time it was just light Stand up, yeah. yeah um so yeah so i haven't done anything like bite me since it's not to say i won't again at some yeah. stage but at the moment just focusing on just trying to write really really as funny as i can be with topics that i enjoy talking about yeah um so the prosecco express the name came about because i like putting alcohol in my show titles because it attracts women that i enjoy and um <laughs> like last year wine timer worked very well for me um that's because it's gonna be the theme now moving yeah, forward yeah 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 alcohol be the whiskey bibles next year something yeah um so i then so when I started writing the show, so I originally, so if anyone looks at the Smock Alley or the Fringe website, the bio there about the show is absolutely a lie. I meant, to, I keep meaning to write to them to change that. So I thought I was going to write a show about this kind of idea of belonging and sense of belonging and identity. And I, I've always been really interested in, as an adopted person, like how much of my personality did I inherit and how much of it did it, it like was kind of built yeah. by my environment, which of course is an impossible question, really, because it's like mixing paint and then trying to pull the colors back out again it's yeah. very difficult but i wanted to write a show about that a funny show about dna and destiny and where they meet and where's the line um, and then sure i lost i wrote all the blurbs wrote everything sent it all off to the printers all the posters got printed and then i lost absolute interest in that it shows nothing about that anymore <laughs> so then it evolved because so i was like god ultimately i love i adore and i'm fascinated by relationships, mm-hmm. uh, marriage, kids, all those things, because I haven't done any of it yet. Yeah. So I feel like I'm an observer. Yeah, I'm kind of observing it all. Documentaries about motherhood and stuff. Made Baby Hater, mm-hmm. yeah, which just was on in Finland the other night. And I so, <laughs> did you speak Finnish? I speak Finnish, yeah. <laughs> Some guy emailed me, he's like, I loved Baby Heater. And I was like, thank you, I am. He's like, you, you are the Baby Heater. <laughs> I was like, I am, the, I'm a professional Baby Heater. <laughs> yep, that's me. Um, so those topics really interest me and yeah. I, I just don't seem to be able to get away from them really. Plus I think they interest a lot of people. So the Prosecco Express then became about me drinking Prosecco at other people's milestones. So stones I have not miled. So That's like amazing. weddings, you know, communions, christenings, and you're I'm always on my own makes it sound like I'm a, I'm very sad. I'm yeah, not. But you're on the Prosecco Express. Exactly. Mm. I'm on other people's Prosecco Express, drinking their Prosecco at their events. Do you feel like people who are who are having those milestones kind of still want to be on the Express a little bit though? Well, <laughs> No, I think they'll it, never admit no, it. I don't know. I think some of them do and some of them don't. I think mm. we, we're we not on, we don't make decisions like our parents did. Like my, you know, our parents, well, certainly my parents would have gotten married very young. And a lot of it was to do with sex before marriage and all. Like, and they, you know, couldn't have sex before marriage. What no one told them was you don't have sex in a marriage either. Mm. So they got totally shot. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they, like my mom got married at like 12. Like she was groomed to be a mother. Yeah. Like you know, and to have children. And I'd say her first words were like, what time do you call this? Like, she's just that kind of woman. Um, and I'm not that kind of woman. So I'm I'm watching it all. And there are parts of it that I, I'm envious of. Yeah. I love that idea of having like a team, you know, like your partner in crime, someone who always has your back and you can raise children so that you don't have to die alone. Your children have to watch you die. I don't know if that's <laughs> an obligation. I don't know if they have to like literally make eye contact with you as you pass <laughs> on. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I do worry like if I don't get married and have kids and if I don't, because 
what people tend to do is multiply themselves. They use other people as buffers between them and the world. So mm. like, you know, they're like, it's like human skeletons. Like they're kind of protecting themselves, like scaffolding with like spouses, babies. Uh, so what happens to me if I don't do those things, which is kind of where the start of the show, where the show was born out of. So then it talks about my two friends, Denise and Carol. And Denise is like, you know, she's kind of the more traditional one. Carol's the uh, radical environmentalist feminist one. That's how she gets her sense of belonging is from mm. that world. And it's about the three of us and our friendships and then a relationship I had and the things that Denise has to do to keep her marriage going. Like, it's not a walk in the park. Also, like, you know, getting married. And if anyone was to get married in their 20s now, I would literally stage an intervention. Like, I think it's absolute madness. It is madness, yeah. We could live till we're 150. You'd be like, till death do us a favour. You'd just be so sick of them. Yeah. I think that's relentless. <laughs> so these are just all thoughts. And then yeah. it just all went into a show. And now the show is the it's Prosecco it. Express. But it is, it's very observational, the, the comedy that you do. It's always reflective of, like, what's kind of going, going on. Going on, yeah, in my life. In your own That's life. all I know. Yeah. That's all I know. And like, if, if I was actually writing about what's actually going on in my life, I'd have to be writing a stand-up show by sitting on a train <laughs> on my own, <laughs> driving across England, which no one wants to hear. Um, so I get a lot of my stuff just from my friends. Like, yeah. that's why I can always justify going out to drink with my friends, because I'm like, it's work, it's research, yeah. it's work. Because I do, I always ask them about their lives, and my life at the moment is quite contained. Mm. Um, like, I tried to go a date with a guy recently and I gave him one date that I was free that he couldn't do and that no sorry oh, sorry went to a date with a guy before Edinburgh went on one date and he's like do you want to do it again and I was like yeah yeah cool and he's like when are you free and I said <laughs> when did I say this was like uh, July and I said I can meet you I think it was like the 28th of September <laughs> and he was like okay so my, I don't have the freedom to do it at the moment like things were quietened down at the things were quietened down in a month or two um, so I have to live through my friends I have to steal their lives basically <laughs> for my show <laughs> they don't mind Tell me about where people can go to get tickets for this. Tell us the dates first off. So the dates, it's running in the Smock Alley in the Dublin Fringe from the 10th to the 15th of September. And there's a matinee on the Saturday. So I think, yeah, there's uh, two shows on the Saturday. Tickets are 16 euro to my knowledge, yeah. unless, of course, you are a student. So just go on to Dublin Fringe and you can get all the information blah, there blah, as blah. well. So the tickets are on Dublin <laughs> Fringe and the Smock Alley website. There was a bit of trouble with the tickets, There was, uh, but it's all sorted now. Um, people were getting me very excited, going, you're sold out, I can't get tickets. I was like, am I? And then I realised it was just a problem with the system and I wasn't sold out at all, which was devastating. It's a glitch. Yeah, um, but yeah, or the tickets are on my website at joannemcnally.com. Do you like coming home to Ireland to perform? Love it. Yeah. I just read a book about homing pigeons. I just did this uh, podcast book club thing, which was amazing because I was forced to read books that I would never read. Give us an example. One of them was homing and it's about homing pigeons. It's about, by this guy called John Day. John Day, Lee John Day. It was brilliant. Shut up. Oh my God, it was so good. So basically... What it's section of a bookshop would that even be? I know. In like I was, the nature section? I don't know. I really don't know. And it, when I was reading reviews about it, they were saying that. They were like, is it a bird book? Is it a fiction? It's it's a non-fiction because it's actually about his life. But they're like, is it autobiographical? Is it a nature book? Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, but it's so beautifully written and it's so fascinating. Nothing really happens in it, to be honest. Yeah. This man becomes a pigeon fancier. It's his own life. That's what they call them, pigeon fanciers. And it talks about like what pigeons have done and there's pictures of pigeons with little cameras strapped to them. Pigeons took the first aerial photos in like back in the 1900s or whatever. Um, pigeons have been seen to use roundabouts. <laughs> Homing pigeons, because it's actually kind of a mystery of how they home. They're not sure how they do it. They have like this inner compass. I they think they smell the wind, but they've been used. They've been seen to use actual exits on roundabouts that they're supposed to take. Yeah, they're fascinating, but the pigeons that these people are talking about are very different to the pigeons that you and I would encounter on a date. Like I saw. Oh, like the knacker Instagram. pigeons smoking in town. Yeah, like yeah. I saw on your Instagram there was a pigeon. Was it your Instagram or was it someone's? I don't know. Was but there the one leg was me. <laughs> the pigeon with the one leg. Yeah. And you were just like, I can't I'm cope. I over it. it. I was like, oh my God. And I obviously just read this whole book about pigeons and how amazing they were. And here was this little dude with one leg. And then someone messaged me going, oh, they took it up under their thing I don't know for attention I don't know <laughs> they're very smart like don't underestimate pigeons they're ballsy yeah what was the question there do I like coming back to Ireland <laughs> Yes, I was saying that 
You are the, a pigeon. No, the, oh. yes, yes, I guess, yes, I am. And yes, I, to conclude the chat, I am a pigeon. Uh, a home <laughs> pigeon. And home to me is a feeling. It's not actually a place. Yeah. And Ireland gives me a, it's a feeling. A little bit too much about uh, pigeons, but Joanne McNally, we... Cut out the pigeons. We have, no, absolutely, I'm absolutely keeping that in. <laughs> Joanne McNally, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So that was Joanne McNally there. Uh, all the information, as she said, you can go and check it out on her Instagram. She she hates talking about herself and her shows, but as we mentioned there, she always does it. So all the information <laughs> is there as well. Um, so we're back now with Nadia and Denise. Denise, I want to talk to you a little bit because, like we said earlier, the last time we had you on, we were talking about Love Island. And yes. speaking of the definition of, of summer ending, mm. it's officially over now. Like, we're in September, this is it. Um, is the, the end of Love Island as well. So, I mean, I suppose it's been eight weeks now. Did you watch Love Island? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I missed the last couple because I went to Colombia, but the, the end is always a bit boring, isn't it? It kind of yeah. is. They're yeah. going on the big dates and it's a bit cringy. And Once the drama fizzles out yeah. and people have stopped recoupling, you then know that you're just kind of plain sailing yeah. till the end, so yeah. Yeah, that's a fair point, actually. It did get a little bit boring towards the end. Um, but there's been collaborations, there's mm -hmm. been fashion lines, there's been breakups, there's been new love connections, usually with ex-Love Islander <laughs> cast <laughs> members. I don't know how they find yeah, each other. I don't other. know. It's See, just... they're all going to the same events and they yeah. all get invited to the same parties and it's a case of, like, you were on last year, I was on this year, like, ha, 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 and they get to mingle and this is just... I yeah. don't know, Love Island just generates more like Love Island couples from previous series and it, it always happens. Yeah, Arabella, they're agents, do Yeah, they? they do. See, that's a lot of it too. I feel like their agents are kind of like pulling the strings as yeah. well a little bit. Um, but uh, Den uh, Denise presented, I've got a text for three weeks, three days. Three weeks? Three. I did it for three days three a week. Three days <laughs> a week. Eight weeks of my <laughs> life. <laughs> three days a week for eight you weeks. Know. And uh, yeah, so it was an intense... Um, an intense situation, yeah. but obviously you were very dedicated to it. Yeah. Did you have a come down yourself after the show ended? I did a bit. See, that's when I went away. I yeah. was like, you know, jet out of the country, get away from everything to do with Love Island, everything <laughs> to do with entertainment for a while. I'm mm. back in it now, quite deep. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I needed, I definitely needed that break after we were recording it at 7 a.m. every morning. That's uh, it. And it was great. I had you on quite a bit as well, mm -hmm. as well as producing the show for me. And then I also had um, a kind of revolving door of guests, which is fabulous too, because everyone loves Love Island yeah. and it's such an easy yeah. topic to talk about that my show could have been an hour I could have talked yeah. about it yeah what day. I found so interesting as well about the show like once we got it up and running people were approaching you about like coming on because yeah. the thing with the show like Love Island is that it's not just about the actual show it's the talkability that it brings with yeah. it. So like everybody has an opinion on relationships. It's kind of like the producers of that show just hit gold they in, do. in terms of mm. like, yeah, get a bunch of like ridiculously attractive people together on an island and uh, get them to kind of fancy each other. Like it's not rocket science, but the ins and outs of these little micro relationships is what made it such a talking point with no. everybody, with people that you wouldn't expect yeah. to watch trash TV. It's like a social experiment, even if yes. you don't watch other reality TV, it's just the yeah the relationships and that it's just so and even if you watch Love Island with your friends everyone wants to give their five cents yeah. like there's been times that we used to have to pause the TV yeah. because I was like I need to figure out what's <laughs> happening next what do you want to say and they're like oh my god Tom's an asshole I can't yeah. believe Danny's after doing that what the fuck is wrong with Michael you know everyone has something they want to say and I even found that like people would be approaching me to come on the show and they're like I can't believe what happened tonight this better be the case still on Friday when I'm coming on and I'm like it better be because yeah. it'll be great a great talking point you Absolutely. know Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and it definitely like it took over everybody's life. It was a massive success this mm -hmm. year as well because you know it is going to drop off, it's going to wane, it's going to have the Big Brother effect. Eventually, people will tire of it, um, but that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. There's going to be two versions. Winter, a yeah. winter version. Like South Africa for yeah. winter, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. I have they're a flogging that horse they're now. They're flogging the horse oh. now, and I have a feeling that they're noticing that their time is limited. Mm. So they're like, let's just double it. Yeah, while they can now. While they can, mm. because there is going to come a time when we're going to be like Love Island. I couldn't be yeah. arsed. Yeah, absolutely. Committing to that kind of time to watch it's it. Isn't winter a better time to have it? Because nine o'clock 
on a summer's night. You probably should be out doing nice stuff. Yeah, well, we, should, we should all be at events, yeah. but I was yeah. at home watching yeah. Love Island. But there has been times I've been at events and we've noticed everyone drop off at around <laughs> half eight because everyone's like skirting to leave to go home. Absolutely. Sure. So yeah, I do think winter will be a better time because everyone is inside. It's going to be pissing rain outside, obviously, because yeah. yeah. inevitably it's Ireland. And everyone will be hooked to it and it will be something that will kind of tip us over for the winter. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm yeah. very excited for it to come back. I mean, it's funny that even, even a month on, um, and like you know yourself from, from working in this industry it still holds a huge amount of gravity in terms of, of news and the news cycle like we ran a piece on site there during the week about Michael he's going on another dating reality TV show he's going on X on the Beach X on the Beach oh, yeah. which I think he's going on the American version of it so The Sun reported this and they said well, an insider said, uh, Michael was one of the standout stars on this year's Love Island thanks to his love triangle with Amber and Joanna. See, get yourself a triangle and you'll yeah. and you'll do all right. Yeah, you you know, this is what I find. He's had a lot of female attention since leaving the villa but hasn't found that special someone so he's hoping this show will help fix that. No, he's not. And no, only yeah. been like a <laughs> month or something? He's not at all. And if you remember, if you watch Love Island in uh, 2018, Adam Collard, he was another, yeah. yeah, he's another star. He got approached to be on um, X on the Beach as well. And he did this like tell all on his YouTube where he he said, oh, I've got a girlfriend already. And they wanted him to just go on the show to kind of like, you know, pitter patter between women being like, I don't know what it is that I want. And then he'd get £25,000. But yeah, that's what you want. Hard to say well, no, no. Yeah. But I mean, X on the beach. And when I when it comes to like, you know, hitting gold with a reality TV concept, I think X on the beach is the worst idea that I've ever heard of. Imagine. You couldn't pay me, you no. couldn't pay me a million, to be honest with you, to be on a beach and have one of a number of exes turn up. Like, oh I'd rather do anything else. No, I'd rather I'm, do anything else. I always imagine myself on a week, because I watch everything reality okay. TV. And I'd be sitting at home with my friends and I'm like, if I came out, so the so you're sitting on the beach and the exes come out of the sea. Yeah. Which, I'm like, by the way, I'm sorry, but from a pr production point of view, they have to get those people to that point where they walk out. <laughs> well, and they walk so out. They, they don't, they don't swim walk in Whether the it's a jet ski or like mm. a little boat, I don't know, but they can see what X is yeah. coming out. They don't swim mm. to the island, you know, <laughs> but they're walking out and they, they come out from the water. And I'm like, if I came out from the water like that in my bikini, <laughs> hair gel back, no makeup, I was like, everyone would run off the beach. I was like, how do they just make this and everyone looks stunning? You're That's just like, it. wow. Like when you come out of the ocean, like there's usually some snot hanging oh, off yeah. and stuff you're like itchy that. You're itchy and you know, <laughs> your hair is not bikini in one piece. Off, yeah. down. Bit of seaweed, yeah. yeah. Um, but it couldn't pay me. No. No, to, because you know it's never going to be the good ex that ended amicably and no. like you wish them well. It's it's going to be, it's going to be the dramatic. Even so, ex. I don't want to share a villa with them or no. see them again. I know the thing is, or they see them with someone else. They get what? people that they've like had recent one night stands with, yeah, where they kind really exes. and they are unsure of where they stand. Yeah. So then it makes good TV. Because yeah. Reality TV has a lot to answer for, and I feel like we'll be paying for it for generations. Oh, to come. absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But we do like Love Island. Yeah, we love Love Island. Yeah, and we'll, it's we'll kind of, it. I think, brought Mallorca back to people's minds. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it was all Ibiza for quite a while, but Mallorca is really, I've heard a lot more people going this year. Yeah. And I think it's got to be to do with Love Island. Absolutely. Um, so it is, like we said, kind of the end of the summer, even though we don't want to accept it. So heading into the winter months, it's depressing. A lot of people don't have any annual leave left. Um, and it's just it's just one of those changing season moments that we're going through. So I suppose from from kind of a travel writer and blogger perspective, like, do you have any kind of tips in terms of things that people can do that they don't have the time or the money to go on any more big trips? And also it's come to the end of the year and it's getting a little bit cold, but like are weekend trips the kind of ticket? Do you think a like, city break would be a good thing? Basically, how can we just get through it without... <laughs> wanting to go on X on the beach, for example. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this year, especially, I've seen a lot more people do Irish trips. So just staying at home and doing staycations. Staycations. Yeah, going mm. west. Like, Ireland's absolutely beautiful. And it doesn't have to be good weather because we don't expect yeah. that. Mm. So, you know, just put your raincoat on, wrap up warm, drive to the west coast. Or you can even still do activities and stuff. You can still put on a wetsuit and go surfing. Yeah. Um, there's beautiful hotels. Everywhere in Ireland, we have a stunning coastline. There's so much to do. It's not always the cheapest is the only thing. Like, yeah, accommodation can be mm. quite expensive. expensive. Yeah, yeah it can. can be. Yeah, yeah. But there's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of choice. So I think you know that's definitely something you can do. 
and also, you know, even just going to Northern Ireland, going to Belfast, I was up there recently. I love that city. Yeah, Belfast is amazing. Yeah. I went up to the Titanic Museum actually there a while ago and uh, it's just an amazing afternoon. It was absolutely piss and rain outside, but it didn't matter. Yeah, because we spent were, hours in there. We were in the museum for literally yeah. hours. Yeah. I went to the Christmas markets there as well last year. Yeah. They're fucking fabulous. Yeah. They're really, really nice. That's right yeah. there, City Hall at Christmas and it's gorgeous. I think it starts at the end of November. You can do all the Game of Thrones stuff. If, if Game of Thrones has left another gaping hole in your yeah. heart, all of that stuff, like mm -hmm. and the Dark Hedges and all that, um, Giant's Causeway, the Caracarid Rope Bridge. There's loads up on the north coast as well. If you want to stay in Belfast and do day trips as yeah. well. Um, but, but City Breaks abroad, Lisbon is still... Oh, so popular. Stunning. Yeah. Love Lisbon. Yeah. Have you been to Lisbon? No, I haven't. Oh, but yeah, the amazing. pictures of it and everything. Yeah. Those little tram cars that yeah. go up and down the streets, I always see those Very on Instagram. Cool. Like yeah, that exactly. navigator, and I'm like, I want to go there. Yeah, it's incredible. And if you've already been to Lisbon, Porto is a lovely, lovely yeah. city to go to as well. So, I mean, yeah, there are places that you can do. Portugal is great because it's only a couple of hours, the flight, but even going to Berlin, and there's loads of places. Mm. I'd just say go on Skyscanner. Um, if you're not f fussy about where you're mm. going, you can just say Dublin or wherever you are in Ireland to everywhere or anywhere, and it will tell you where is cheapest. So yeah. we'll come up with countries first, then cities, and you can pick your dates and everything, and you can just find cheap flights and, and go do, do it that way. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I really want to like go book somewhere right Spontaneous. now. Spontaneous. Yeah. Like yeah. Christmas markets, like you said. Yeah. yeah not just in Ireland, but in I, was, I did the Berlin ones as well, and they're yeah. fantastic. I was in Belgium, yeah. actually, for Christmas markets one year, and it was incredible. It's such a nice feeling you just get hot mulled wine yeah. even though I don't really like mulled wine but you just have to when you're I at a Christmas know. market yeah. you absolutely do for the picture. It's something to look forward to yeah definitely um another thing that I just wanted to ask you before you go because I feel like we can't have uh someone who is as traveled as you without getting the tips for traveling so I saw a post that you did about uh you were abroad and you just said you don't need new clothes yeah. when you travel and I thought that was a really kind of it's just a nice line to say because sometimes people get this travel panic about like have I got enough stuff packed with me I have always always overpacked like I went to Dubai for work one year for god I think I was there for three days I'm actually quite embarrassed to say this and I brought seven pairs of shoes <laughs> I did not wear any of them I literally wore one pair of shoes for the entire time but I don't know why I'm just one of those people who like panic it's, it's, like like yeah. yeah. it's a panic kind of overpacking but so like if people are going away or if they're going on trips, like what are the kind of essential things you do in order to maybe take a little bit of that stress away and just keep things simple? Not go on a shopping spree before, potentially. I think it probably started when I was doing sun trips in the winter and you can't buy stuff. Yeah. And then I realized like, I actually have enough and I don't need anything new. And also, of course, everyone's much more aware of sustainability yes. and fast fashion at the moment. So not wanting to always buy new stuff. So it's happened over time with me. Not, it hasn't just been sudden. Mm. But I keep, my color palette really simple. It's always just denim, black, white, and things that can mix and match, yeah. and classic styles. So I don't really follow trends that much. I just have a, a very kind of simple classic style. Um, and they work for every location, um, every, every time of year. And mm. so I can just bring out the summer stuff, the same things every time, and throw in a couple of like prints or florals, because they always work, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, if, it, if it's not somewhere hot, you, sure, you can just be wearing what you're wearing at home anyway. So yeah. I, I have a tip that really helped me is I unfollowed a lot of people who are showing new clothes every day. Right. It's just not for me. And that's fine. I'm not knocking them, but it's mm. not for me. And I don't want to see that because if I feel then I can't be seen in the same outfit twice. Yeah. Of course you can. That's like an outrageous mad. idea. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how we got to that point. But, you know, people are starting to talk about shopping in charity shops and rewearing stuff. I've got a hashtag on my Instagram. The Daily Self rewears and it's me in different places with the same outfits. And it's yeah. over years. So, like, I'm wearing see, the same swimsuit. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. No one's ever going to stop me and be like, can't believe you're wearing that again. Yeah, yeah like if you, you know? wash your clothes, like what's the problem? Yeah. Like yeah. obviously I washed it before yeah. I wore it again, but yeah. I bought it, so I'm going to wear it again. Exactly, yeah. You can't just wear something once. It's you can't afford to do that no. anyway. Yeah. And the planet cannot t take it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just m make it a lot more simple so that I can mix and match things. So it's easier to pack. Even though I, I'm much better at it, better at packing than I used to. I still hate it. Do you hate packing? I hate I packing. I hate packing. <laughs> I hate it. I hate, do you hate packing? Passion. I hate packing and I hate unpacking. I hate both of them. I hate I don't both mind of unpacking. Them. I just throw everything in the washing oh machine. Oh my God, no. It's like my suitcase sits there for so long and I think <laughs> I'm just on such a downer from being back. Yeah. I'm like, you're a reminder that I'm home. <laughs> Sometimes I don't unpack. Like I literally just kind of 
take things out as I need. As like, I'll wash the dirty clothes or whatever, but sometimes I will leave mm. a suitcase there because I travel quite a bit, like, back and forth to London. Yeah. And sometimes if it's a weekend and then it's another weekend, I'll just leave the overnight bag there. Like, I'll take out the dirty clothes and then I'll just repack it. Add now. in bits. Add yeah. in bits. So sometimes yeah. I honestly just don't unpack, which is a terrible thing. My mother will kill me. The reason I hate packing is because I'm really bad at it, to be honest with you. Like, there was one time I went on a ski trip and I bought, I brought, like, five different animal hats with me and no underwear. Like, li literally no underwear and just loads of hats. And I was just like, what? What am I supposed to do? Wear the I animal hat. Yeah, I wasn't going to ski commando, so I had to go and try and find somewhere it's in the Alps. expensive as well. Yeah, to get underwear, oh, you know? So I'm just really bad at if that. If you make a list, it really helps. I know, so yeah. I've heard this. Yeah, I know, I don't know. And I'm not an organized person, which is why it helps. Yeah. So it really prevents you from overpacking. And if you can even say, if you kind of know what you're doing, like, this is going to have a beach day, we're going to have um, whatever night out. Mm. You can decide, I need this many going out, yeah. Yeah. and whatever. Pick shoes and stuff that go with everything. You're going to wear what's most comfortable, yeah. realistically. Absolutely. If something isn't comfortable, you aren't going to wear it. You can't walk. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. So you need to be... I have much better time when I'm comfortable. Yeah, I feel like it's sometimes as well, like a lot of people that I follow on Instagram who I love and they're incredible influencers, but they they are just so organized. And sometimes they have like, you know, we'd all have the odd rail, clothing rail or whatever. Like sometimes they dedicate their packing to a certain rail and they get it all like sorted yeah, like that this. <laughs> And I'm just like, wow. And the shoes are underneath the clothes and everything is and then like it all matching. Goes right. in. Don't forget, just, that's Instagram. That. Yeah. that is not real life. Yeah. It can't be real. No, no it also, can't. <laughs> a lot of fashion bloggers are sent all of this stuff before they go. So yeah. like, that's what I'm talking about, the pressure of Instagram. Yeah. So I unfollow people who make me feel like I'm not good enough or like what I'm wearing isn't good enough for Instagram or for my photos. Yeah. That's not realistic. Not like the normal person isn't sent 10 outfits before their holiday. Yeah. And they don't have time to do that. They're in work. They don't mm. have the money to do it. So just going through your wardrobe and picking bits, like I have my summer stuff. I'm going to have to change yeah. now, aren't I? Mm, yeah. Now that you've said summer Sorry. is... Sorry, I've, I've, I've officially it's said over. it. It's over, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's wind. It's going to be woolies now. It's <laughs> <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm just... Just don't feel... Try not to feel pressurized because pressure. it's not real. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I went out and got myself a rail and then now my rail like goes like this because I built it myself. So oh, no. that's definitely not on Instagram as well. Um, Nadia, what's coming up for you then? Any big trips that you can tell us about that are coming? I mean, you've been on so many trips in the last few months that all look incredible. But um, anything that you're really excited about that we can watch out for? Well, I'm really looking forward to going back to, it's Campo Viejo, it's called in uh, Rioja in Spain. So it's harvest time. And okay. I've always wanted oh. to be somewhere like in a wine producing region at harvest. So we'll be crushing the grapes and picking grapes That's and all that amazing. kind of stuff. amazing. Yeah, and it's, the winery is really close to the town where you can do like a tapas trail, walk through the town. So I'm looking forward to that. And Spain's my favorite country, so underrated. Yeah. Um, I have a holiday, a weekend holiday with all my girlfriends um, in Portugal at the end of the month for my birthday. And then I don't have really any plans. So I've been asking on my Instagram, where would you like to see? Mm. Because I've always just gone where I want to go. Yeah. And it probably would make more sense to see what people <laughs> actually want to see. Because they might be like, Colombia, I have no interest in that. Yeah. So I asked and it was Japan. Like, that's where people want to yeah, see. Yeah, I was and in Alaska. Japan and it's just, it's absolutely life changing. That's what like, everybody says. It's literally yeah. life changing. Japan is my next big trip for yeah. next year. And Louis, where I Louise Cooney was in Japan there, like literally a couple of months after me. And I was messaging you her while she was there. I, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I influenced Louise Cooney, but um, no big deal. Uh, I was messaging her as she was on the bullet train and it was, I couldn't sleep. And obviously, Obviously, like with the time difference, it was a different time. But uh, I was like, it's so cool how when they leave every carriage, they turn around and give the carriage a bow and then they walk out. Oh, wow. She's like, I didn't notice that amazing now. That's all I'm looking at. But like, it's just such an unbelievable culture. And, and it's just so different to ours as well. Like, yeah. that's what I'm like most fascinated by. It's mm -hmm. just so different. Yeah, it's but so even cool. the fashion of the Japanese women is just so like, it's literally, it's almost uniformed. Like it's a, it's a tiny white tee, it's a long skirt and it's shoes, but I, they just look so chic though. Mm. It's their hair, it's their makeup, it's everything. Like, you just, like, I, I felt, like, not the best, actually. To be honest with you. <laughs> I don't want that. No, but they just are. They're just so chic. Like, they just, they have it I nailed. I like that in France. Yeah. 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 Well, that's it. Oh, they, just, yeah. they just have yeah. it nailed, yeah. But, uh, but like, yeah, everybody be says it, and I have never had any desire whatsoever to go <sighs> to Japan or China. And... But hearing you talk about it like that, like I, I'm gonna have to yeah. bite the bullet train. Right now, <laughs> but, hey, 
Okay. I that go. was very sick in China. I got really sick oh. in China. Yeah. So I'd be like, a bit worried about the food. I don't know why because I travel all the time and yeah. I eat. I try stuff, but but it's kind of part of traveling as well. Like yeah. these kind of these kind of things happen. And um, but Alaska. Now yeah. that would be that would be yeah. insane. I really want to go somewhere really cold. Well, Antarctica is my number one. Like yeah. that is the top of my bucket list. Wow. But it's really expensive to get to Antarctica. And if I do, that will be, I'll have been to every continent. But um, wow. does Antarctica have hotels and things like that? Like I think most of the trips you do are a cruise. Okay. So like an expedition boat yes. from Patagonia, from like that all the way south of America. Oh, wow. Um, Are you just picturing, like, Oh, I'm ice. just seeing but it ice is, yeah, and polar bears. It, that's in my well, mind. Well, I yeah, think... Yeah. And I haven't been, so I you think that's what it is. see a polar bear, you, you want to flip and just run. Yeah, yeah. but I think... Yeah. That, is it polar bears in Alaska? Ooh. But it's bears. Don't know. No, Alaska... Is, Arctic Circle? I'm thinking of Alaska as an igloo again. Like, that's all I can... <laughs> well, well see, Alaska has people and hotels and stuff, okay. whereas Antarctica has no indigenous population. Wow. So, Yeah. It's, Jeez, it's that just, is so it good. is just ice. <laughs> yeah. I think there's polar bears in every place that you said, but also I don't think it's bad that we don't necessarily know. It's very far away. Well, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I don't know. That's yeah. why I have to and go. And unless you figure go, it out. then you need to show us exactly. yes, so we can be like, oh, there's the polar bears. But there's definitely bears in Alaska. Yeah. yeah. And um, when I said I want to go to Alaska, then people were like, you have to go to British Columbia and Canada. And they have, I think at the moment, like coming into September, October is where you see the salmon. The salmon jumping. Oh, jumping yes, 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 I love yes, salmon. Yes. Salmon is my favourite thing. <laughs> favourite thing to eat. Yeah, I just <laughs> love salmon. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I need to go to that. Yeah. And then uh, whales and all of that kind of stuff. So Amazing. Yeah, I, I wanted to do something a little bit different. A cold trip where you can wrap up, cosy, and yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds fabulous. Or, or Arctic Circle or, or like Norway and you know, all the fjords. I love being on boats, so anything to do with the water and boats yeah. and the coastline and love whales and dolphins yeah. and all that kind of stuff so incredible well I would implore anybody who's listening or watching to go and follow Nadia obviously and send in the requests where you want to go yeah. um, Japan Alaska they would be my like you have to go to Japan oh my yeah. gosh just I need... think I'll, I'll go wherever anyone wherever we, wherever we tell you to go <laughs> yeah, you decide um, Denise what's coming up for you then yeah working hard uh, working hard into the winter months yeah. Um, yeah hopefully we're going to have another show back um, on the airwaves very, very shortly as we well, will. because I know um, we had that kind of little Love Island come down and yeah. I'm getting back into the things post holiday. So, yeah, plenty will be coming. Absolutely. We need all the entertainment fixes because you yes. do watch more of that stuff than I do. And you're just much better at it than I am in terms Thank of you. all of that <laughs> pop culture business. Denise is going to see Downton Abbey today. <gasps> yeah. Yes. For like oh, a in the cinema. The trailer, yeah. 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 Very excited. That is exciting. Very it's exciting. Like, that's out soon, isn't it? It's out the sixth, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, very I think it's going to be um, a letdown. Oh, that's a bit niggy. <laughs> no, to be honest, I haven't. When I look at a movie trailer, sometimes I don't Sometimes I think they can be, sometimes I think when you take a, such a successful series, it's turned yeah. into a movie, sometimes it's a letdown. Oh. I get that. I think I'll decide that Let after yeah. I watch it. I think do. that's the good are idea. Are you a big Downton Abbey fan, though? I do like it, yeah. yeah. I really, really do like it. And the readers and her are actually obsessed with it, more oh, so obsessed. than I am. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got such a big following. I'm sure no matter what people would like the film anyway. But yeah, I'm excited to see whether it is a, a hit or a flop. Yeah, myself. absolutely. Well, we'll keep a, a watch out for that as well. Denise Curtin and Nadia, thank you so much thank you. for coming in. Thank you. It's great to be here.